Welcome, everybody. He introduced me, so I won't have to go through this, but I'm Mark. I work at Discord. Previous to that, I worked at Dropbox for a while, doing infrastructure stuff, um, love Legos and flying. So I'm actually going to start the story by talking a bit about Kafka, which is probably not the kind of thing we're mostly talking about at Scylla, but I want to sort of set up a story here. When I worked at Dropbox, I was part of the team that rolled out Kafka to the organization. Um, we managed to have a pretty successful cluster. We were doing over 15 million messages per second within the organization. We had over 100 machines running Kafka. Um, and it took us roughly four years, or sorry, four engineers working for a solid year to productionize Kafka at Dropbox at the scale that we needed. So let me take a step a second to describe what do I mean by productionize. This is sort of the road from running it, turning it on, to the point where you feel comfortable running it, where you can recover from outages, where you can deal with whatever problems arise, where you can train people, and all of those great things. But it took a year. And why did it take a year? It turns out Kafka is actually kind of hard. And this is a story we see repeated in the open source world, in a lot of the projects that we use, like Cassandra, MongoDB, et cetera. It's very easy to download and start them. It's a lot harder to run them at scale. Some of the things that you have to go through when you're doing Kafka, just at the installation level, what kind of Kafka are you going to install? Just Apache Kafka? Confluent Kafka? Datastax Kafka? Like, If you're already in one of these platforms, maybe it's an easy choice. If you're not, it could be harder. Once you do that, how do you configure it? For the most part, it's kind of Google and hope. You can find a lot of blog posts from different people who are running this at scale, and they tell you how they run it. But their hardware is different than yours. Their use case is different than yours. Their configuration is, in many ways, just sort of has evolved over the year of productionization that they put in. There's also over 150 tunables for a Kafka broker. And the permutations of there to figure out how to get this stuff right is incredibly hard. And monitoring, if you, if you Google, how to monitor Kafka. They say, here's how you use JMX. That just gives you stats. That gives you a lot of stats. That doesn't actually tell you how to monitor a system. That doesn't tell you what matters. When you're paged at 3 AM and you have 10,000 metrics to look through, what matters? It's really hard to tell. This also makes getting community help very difficult, because you have to spend the first hour of every conversation, here's my config file. Here's my hardware. Here's my use case. Here's my load. Here's how everything fits together before they can get to the point of understanding what you're doing to try to help you out. So we followed the, the road that most of you have probably followed at one time or another. You start by being very re reactive with incidents. You write postmortems. You do root cause analysis. You do all those sorts of things to understand what has gone wrong in your cluster. And then you make betterments out of that. You make playbooks. You improve your monitoring. You create dashboards. You learn about stuff that you don't have today that you need to have. Um, and then over time, hopefully, you move to a more proactive story with like chaos engineering, disaster readiness testing, stuff like that. But it's never easy. And if you've deployed, in this case, Kafka or Cassandra or Mongo or any of these systems at scale, you've been through this story before. It's, it's never as easy as we'd hope. So I'd actually, I'm going to take a small digression here. Um, as mentioned in the introduction, I am a private pilot. I like to fly. So we're going to talk a little bit about flight lessons. If you think about aviation, aviation is an incredibly complex system. This is the cockpit of a Boeing 747-200, uh, circa, I believe, mid-60s. They've gone digital these days, but it's no less complex. There are hundreds of dials, switches, and doohickeys in here. It takes three trained professionals who have spent years learning to fly this thing to do it safely. And that's not just it. There's so much more that goes into aviation that makes it a complex system. And yet, it's one of the, most, the safest forms of mass transportation that we have. Certainly better than driving um, or motorcycles, which is another passion of mine. But how do they do that? How do they make it safe? You start with this complexity. You start with airplanes, ATC, airports, passengers, all these sorts of systems, and they end up with a reliable system. How? So I'm going to, they do it through these things that, and I'm not going to dive into these, but if you did get into aviation, you learn about what are called SOPs, standard operating procedures. You learn about POHs, or pilots operating handbooks. You learn about checklists, checklists, checklists. You've probably seen this in the movie. 
To start an airplane is not get in, turn the key, let's go. It's get in, sit down, open a checklist, start at the top. Do this, do this, do this, do this. It's regimented and it's fully documented and trained. You know exactly what you're doing and you're following a list. So this brings me to the idea of opinionated systems or having strong principles about how to run something, how to do something. And I actually want to tie this back to open source. But in aviation, or sorry, the concept is competent stewards of a system who know how to run it, who know how to use it, who know how to deploy it. In aviation, this is the FAA with the NTSB. They spend a lot of time studying incidents, studying behaviors, psychology, systems, um, metallurgy, all those things. To pull out of that, how do we build safety, build reliability into a system? But in open source, we don't really do that. We, you go download Kafka from the internet, and Kafka is great. I love the software; it's fantastic. And like, same thing with like Mongo and Cassandra. The software is good, but the ecosystem around it, how you run it in production, it's wild west. It's like you can ask LinkedIn what they do, and they will help you out and show you what's been successful for them. You can talk to Twitter, you can talk to your friends at wherever, and you'll get a hundred stories from a hundred people. But that's not really going to help you in running your system. So now I'm actually going to talk a little bit about Scylla and Discord, which is why we're all here, the Scylla part anyway. Um, Discord is a communications platform. If you've used Slack, you can mentally model it as Slack. We're focused on the gaming market. So we have 150 million registered users, many tens of millions daily active using Discord. When you launch the app, you land in this. It's called the activity feed. It shows you some like news at the top. Overwatch just announced they're a new hero in the game your quick launcher with what games you can play or have on your computer, and your now playing section, which is like these people have been playing this game recently or they're playing it right now, how long they've been playing it, et cetera. We use Scylla to power this, and we trust it to be the, the data source for the home page of Discord. How did we get to that point? Well, this is the Scylla experience. If you remember back to sort of the Kafka experience at the beginning, which is like how to install, how to configure, how to run, et cetera, Scylla just says, you know what? This is our system. We've spent years building this and understanding it. Do it like this. Here's how you install it. Here's how you configure it. In fact, you don't choose how to configure Scylla for the most part. You run some tools. They write out config files. Yes, you can go in after the fact and change it if you wish, but they give you the baseline of how to do it. And for monitoring, they're very opinionated. Here's your Docker image of Prometheus. Here's your image of Grafana. Here are your dashboards. Use these. If you go out into the community and ask for help with Scylla, everybody knows what you're going to be looking at. They know what graphs are important. People who are good stewards of the system have already figured out what is important and how to like, present it. So you don't actually have a lot of decisions to make when it comes to deploying Scylla. Um, in our experience at Discord, we found this to be true. Setup was trivial. The operations have been easy and well understood. We also have a background in Cassandra, which has helped in some of that familiarity. We have had a production incident. I'm not saying that you're going to walk away from Scylla and say it never fails. All systems always fail. But in our case, it was capacity. We went from a 5% load test to a 30% test, and we melted the cluster. We spun up our friends at Scylla, showed them the dashboard, which they were intimately familiar with because they had built. And they were immediately able to pinpoint what the problem was and what the resolution was, which was just expand the cluster, which worked. Um, but the multiplica multiplicative factor of having shared knowledge, shared language, shared ability to understand what these things look like and how they work is very powerful for your business. It's very powerful for running these systems at scale. So I want to leave you with this sort of like thought. I think opinions are actually OK. And we should probably take a couple lessons from aviation, not all of them. Um, but it's OK to say, this is how you run something. This is how you do something. And this, by the way, all of us run different kinds of businesses. I think this applies to each of us, too, in the things we're delivering to our customers. There is a cost to infinite configuration. There is a cost to the mental overhead of having to make all these choices, of having to understand how to put stuff together. Your customers may ask for it. They may say, give us all these knobs and whistles and buttons. But it's up to you to figure out, is that actually the right thing for them? Am I actually adding value to their use case and what they're doing? I think Scylla has exemplified this sort of principle 
Um, and it has ended up saving Discord time, money, and downtime. Um, we've had more downtime with our Cassandra clusters. So um, this kind of approach can lead to happy engineers because they're not getting paged at 2 AM, which is great. I don't like getting paged at that time of the night. And when I do, I want to know that I can get help, that they know what's going on, that there's good information out there. Um, and ultimately, happy managers, happy users, good business. So 